Well, you guys asked and I am here to deliver. Today's video is going to be another extreme budget meals video. We are going to make five dinners for your family all for under $40 and we are using ground beef and all ingredients from Walmart. So in today's video, we are going to be making a beef chili with some cornbread muffins. We are also making migas with some homemade pinto beans and pico de gallo. I'm also sharing a recipe for a really delicious ground beef and potato casserole with cucumber salad. We are making baked potatoes with chili and a lettuce salad. And last but not least, homemade tostadas with ground beef and homemade refried beans. These recipes all turned out so delicious and the fact that you can buy all of these ingredients for under $40 and feed a family of four for the whole week is pretty awesome. Thank you so much to today's video sponsor who is Fabric. Parents, it's time to finally cross off the most important thing on your to-do list, which is life insurance. Fabric makes getting a quality term life insurance policy for your family quick, easy, and fits in line with the theme of today's video, super affordable. Fabric was actually built by parents for parents to help make it easier to manage your family's finances. You can apply online in less than 10 minutes, see your quote, and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Fabric has significant savings over other providers with great quality policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. Fabric also has over 1,600 five-star reviews on trustpilot.com and it's fully backed by Vantis Life, one of the most trusted names in life insurance since 1847. So you can feel confident that you're getting a high quality policy that is perfect for your family. Fabric also has a 30-day money-back guarantee and you can cancel at any time time. So protect your family's financial future with fabric. You can apply today in just 10 minutes at meatfabric.com slash Jen. That's meatfabric.com slash Jen, M-E-E-T fabric.com slash Jen. Once again, the link will be down in the description box below. So if you are looking to protect your family's financial future, check out meatfabric.com slash Jen. So I decided to go to Walmart for all of my ingredients because Walmart is the most popular grocery store in America. And it's honestly usually what's most accessible to people. So I picked up some eggs. I also got some sour cream that we're gonna use for a couple different recipes. A block of cheese, we're gonna shred our own. I also picked up a package of the Jiffy corn muffin mix always cheap and cheerful. The ground beef, I ended up getting three pounds and we are going to stretch that for all five meals. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And if you're looking for all of the shopping list and ingredients and price breakdown and recipes, all of that good stuff is gonna be linked in the description box below. There will be a handy printable down there for you to download. It will include the shopping list and all of the recipes. So make sure that you check that out. I also Grab some tomato products for mostly the chili, some tomato paste, some tomato sauce, and then we are also gonna get a bag of dried pinto beans that we're gonna use for a couple of the meals. I got a couple of limes to use in the homemade pico de gallo, which turned out delicious. I'm gonna grab just one onion and we're gonna make that stretch for all five meals. I'm gonna grab a head of lettuce. I remember when lettuce used to be 99 cents each, now it's $1.68, but we're gonna stretch that for some several meals. I needed some cilantro. We're going to use this for the pico and some other garnishes. And then I also needed some jalapenos. I'm going to go ahead and put one of those in my chili just for a little bit of a kick. And then potatoes are obviously always a great budget-friendly option. Five pound bag of potatoes is around $2.68 at Walmart. You can also get a ton of flavor out of garlic. It ends up being pretty inexpensive for one head. I'm going to grab two of the regular cucumbers. We're going to be using these in a delicious cucumber salad that you guys are going to want to make for sure. It's really good for summer. And then also some Roma tomatoes for salads and pico and just different things like that. So once I was done getting all of my ingredients, I'm going to go ahead and check out. 
And my total for this shopping trip for all five meals was $38.94. Okay, so as you saw, my total was $38.94. The only thing I did not pick up off of the list was a half gallon of milk. If they have that at your Walmart, go ahead and grab it. Mine was out of the kind that was in my budget and I already had some at home anyway. So that would add another couple bucks onto the total. Either way, around $40 for these five meals. So I got some potatoes, cilantro, onion, tomatoes, I almost said potatoes again, some jalapenos, cucumbers, garlic, limes, a block of cheddar cheese, a bag of pinto beans, some corn tortillas that were used for several different recipes, our ground beef, three pounds of that, dozen eggs, lettuce, sour cream, some tomato products for the chili, tomato paste, tomato sauce, great value, Rotel, petite diced tomatoes, and our Jiffy corn muffin mix. So this is what we're gonna use under $40 to create these five dinners. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is soak our pinto beans. Now, if you have an Instant Pot, you don't have to pre-soak these, but the last video I did and made pinto beans in my Instant Pot, I got quite a few comments that not everyone has an Instant Pot. So I'm just gonna show you that you obviously don't have to have one <laughs> to make dried beans. So I just have my pinto beans here in my salad spinner. You could do it in a large bowl also. This is just convenient because it has a strainer in it. So I just have some cold water over these and these are gonna soak for about six to eight hours. Okay, so my beans are finished cooking. It didn't take long to cook them, maybe 45 minutes since I pre-soaked them. So all I did after I soaked them is I put them in this pot uh, covered with plenty of cold water. I added some salt, some dried oregano, and some garlic cloves, and a bay leaf. You could also add a chunk of onion if you wanted to, but I'm saving it for the other recipes. And that's it, I just basically let them cool and I'm putting them into containers. Okay, so here are our beans. So one pound of pinto beans, once you cook them up, makes about two of these four cup containers. Now I did leave some of the liquid in there just so they don't dry out in the refrigerator, but these are prepped now. So we'll be using these for our recipes this week. And this is a great way to save a little bit of money. Usually the canned beans are around 50 cents each, 50 to 70 cents actually now. And the dried beans, you obviously get a, a lot more, probably I would say four times as much for just a dollar. All right. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just saute all the ground beef up at once. I have three pounds in here. We're going to divide this amongst three recipes but I need it cooked and crumbled for all of them. So I just have it in a big pot here. This is the same pot that I'm gonna end up making the chili in. I'm just gonna season this with some like multi-purpose seasoning. This is an everything seasoning. It's got salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Next, I'm gonna just chop this onion up. I'm gonna try and chop it as fine as I can because that's the way my family prefers it. So I'm gonna put most of the onion in here with the ground beef, but I'm gonna leave some of it in the bowl because we're gonna make a quick pico de gallo. Next, I'm gonna cut up some of these tomatoes and add them into the onion here. I'm also gonna chop up one of these jalapenos and add it. I'm not gonna include the seeds because I don't want it to be super hot. If some get in there, that's fine, but then I'm gonna save the other jalapeno for the chili. Okay, so I actually transferred this into a larger bowl because <laughs> it, was, it was overflowing. So now I'm gonna chop up some cilantro and put it in there. I'm gonna take out some of the stems. All right, we need some lime juice. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm probably gonna use the juice of two limes. 
Okay, I'm gonna give this a stir and then I just season my pico with salt and pepper and that's it. And this will keep in the fridge for a couple days. I would say at least three, three to four days, probably five days. I mean, it'll break down a little bit, but it'll still taste good. I forgot I was gonna add garlic to this. So I'm gonna add two cloves of that. It gives it a really great flavor. And also if you've ever made homemade guacamole, or if you ever make it, try it adding fresh crushed garlic to it as well. It's really, really good. Okay, so I went ahead and drained the ground beef. This three pounds made about six cups. So I'm just kind of trying to think about how I'm gonna, you know, divide this up strategically. I think what I'm going to do is take one cup out and reserve that on the side for the scallop potato casserole, just because I feel like it has a lot of potatoes in it and I don't need as much beef. And that leaves me with about five cups, so I think I'm gonna use half of it for the chili and half of it for the tostadas. Okay, so I've got my ground beef in here. I'm gonna make the meat for the tostadas. And I put about, I don't know, a tablespoon of tomato paste. And then I'm gonna add spices. And since we did not put it in our budget to buy taco seasoning, I'm just gonna use what I have on hand. And I'm gonna eyeball it, but you can Google for a homemade recipe. So I'm gonna put chili powder, some ground coriander, cumin, and a little bit of garlic powder. And then I'm just gonna stir that around a little bit before I add some water. All right, I'm gonna add a cup of water and then I'll add more if I need it. But basically, it's just gonna cook until everything thickens and then I'll taste it and see if it needs any more seasoning. Okay, so for the beans for the tostadas, I've got a skillet here and I just have a little pat of butter in the bottom of there. You could use oil too if you wanted to. And I'm gonna use half of this container of beans, which is about two cups. I'm gonna save the other half for another meal. And then I'm just gonna cook these over medium heat and mash them up a little bit. I don't want them totally, totally mashed. And then I'll also taste and season them as needed, probably with some cumin, salt, pepper, maybe a little garlic powder. I don't know, we'll see how they taste. I need shredded cheese for all these recipes. So since I had a lot to shred, I'm gonna go ahead and shred it in my food processor. So simple to do, highly recommend it. Okay, so I've got my head of lettuce here. We need part of this for the salad for one night and then part of it for the tostadas. So I think I'm just gonna take off about, I don't know, that much. We'll shred this up and use it tonight for the tostadas. Go ahead and wash it. So for the shells, we're gonna use these uh, white corn tortillas that we picked up. And I'm just shallow frying these in a little bit of vegetable oil. You could also do them in the air fryer. They take longer <laughs> that way and you can't do as many at once. So that's why I'm doing it in a skillet. But you just need a little bit of oil in the bottom there and basically just, you know, fry them up until they're crisp on each side, drain them on some paper towels. And when they come out of the oil and they're hot, just sprinkle them with some salt and they'll taste exactly like homemade tortilla chips. Yum. Okay, so my shells are all crisped up. I forgot my beans back here. Those thickened up. We're just going to kind of use those for a little bit of glue on the bottom of the shells. And then I've got my taco meat in here. Turned out good. So I'll show you how to put these together. So I just put a little bit of beans on the bottom and we're going to add the meat. And one of the tricks to, you know, these particular budget meals that I'm making is to mix the ground beef with the beans in meals because that will help stretch your ground beef. All right, next we'll add the cheese. And we'll do a little bit of lettuce, sour cream, and our pico. Whoops, drop some on the floor. <laughs> All right, well I would say that looks pretty dang good for an extreme budget meal, don't you think Murphy? <laughs> so we've got our tortadas, beans, beef, cheese, pico, Lettuce, sour cream, super good, yum. Okay, so it's the next morning and I just have to give you guys an update on those tostadas that I made last night. They were so good, everyone loved them. Tostadas are a little bit messy to eat, but they're still fun, kind of a different take on tacos. So now I'm making my next extreme budget meal out of this group, which is migas. And I am gonna make these for breakfast, but you could make them for whatever lunch, dinner, if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna heat up the other half portion of beans that I didn't use 
last night because those can go on the migas as well. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these 10 corn tortillas into strips. Bam, ta-da. Okay, I'm gonna put these in a skillet with a little bit of avocado oil and just crisp them up. Okay, so I've got 10 eggs cracked in here. I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of this everything seasoning. Okay, so you can see the tortillas have gotten nice and crispy. I also added a little bit of jalapeno and two cloves of minced garlic. And I'm just gonna add the eggs a little bit at a time and stir everything around until they're cooked. Okay, so you can top these with whatever you want. I just have some of the leftover beans on top of mine, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of shredded cheese. You could add sour cream if you wanted to as well. Avocado, guacamole, bacon. <laughs> bacon is not in the budget. And then I'm just gonna add some of the leftover pico that we had last night from the tostadas, and bam, breakfast or dinner or lunch, whatever you wanna make it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make our chili. So in this big pot here, I've got a couple tablespoons of olive oil just so I can saute the remainder of my jalapeno. And then I've got my ground beef here that I cooked up previously. This is about a pound and a half. I'm gonna add that as well. I've got some garlic left too to spare, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in with the ground beef. Okay, I've gotta show you guys this can opener that I got. It's called the Kitchen Mama can opener. You just, it's got a magnet on it and you just hook it onto there and then it opens the can. You can just walk away and do something else. Okay, so I'm gonna add a can of tomato sauce, a can of petite diced tomatoes, and a can of roast salad. All right, so here is the remainder of the beans that we had cooked up. So we're gonna go ahead and add those. I would say this is probably equivalent to about two cans of beans. Okay, so if you'll remember, I also have some tomato paste left over from the taco meat, I believe it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the chili as well. And then I like to add some water just to thin it out a little bit. And honestly, if you add water to tomato paste, it makes like a tomato sauce anyway. So I'll probably just fill up one of these big cans and add it in there and then we'll add the seasoning. Okay, so I'm gonna start with adding a quarter cup of chili powder. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that seems like a lot. Well, a quarter cup is only four tablespoons and you've got quite a bit of liquid in there, so it definitely needs some flavor. I might need to add some more, we will see. Okay, so I added about a tablespoon of cumin, probably a couple of teaspoons of ground coriander some salt, some pepper, and I also added just a teaspoon of sugar. I always like to do that when I make tomato product stuff because it cuts the acidity of the tomatoes a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a lid on this, simmer it for probably about 20 minutes, and then we'll taste it and see what seasoning it needs. Okay, so to go with the chili, we're gonna make a doctored up Jiffy corn muffin mix. So I've got one box of that, a tablespoon of sugar, some vegetable oil, sour cream, egg, and some milk, and I'll link this recipe down below as well. So I'm gonna put these in muffin cups, but you could also do it in like a nine by nine or an eight by eight dish also. Okay, so I got 10 muffins out of that. These are gonna bake for about 20 minutes. Okay, so our chili's done. I went ahead and tasted it after it got done simmering for about 20 minutes. I added a little bit more salt, 
a tiny bit more sugar and some more coriander and chili powder in it is perfect. You definitely want to taste it, you know, season to taste as always, obviously, because everyone likes theirs differently. So I'm just going to kind of let this rest. Obviously, we're going to use part of the leftovers for this for another meal, but I'm waiting on the corn muffins to finish baking. All right, so here's our chili. I'm going to add some of a little bit of our frozen, frozen shredded cheese da -da -da. meal number whatever this is <laughs> i forgot we've got our chili with some shredded cheese and our corn muffins i put a little pat of butter on the top yum super budget friendly meal but still really delicious definitely a classic okay so the next meal that i wanted to share with you guys was this ground beef and potato casserole and this cucumber salad unfortunately i lost the footage of me actually making the dish but obviously i'll have the recipes linked down below and i'm just going to explain it to you it's very self-explanatory anyway one of the things i would recommend for making at least the casserole recipe but you could also use it for the cucumbers as well is a mandolin slicer these are pretty inexpensive. I actually picked this one up at Aldi many years ago, but I'll link a similar one down below. Basically, it allows you to cut the potatoes very evenly and thinly so that they can cook in the casserole. This is very simple to make, super simple ingredients. What you need for the casserole is one pound of the ground beef that I reserved from cooking it the other day. Uh, you will need some butter, some garlic. I also added some flour and milk that I had here at home, some chicken broth as well, and then some dried thyme leaves, some dried parsley, and some sea salt. And essentially what you do is you slice your potatoes super thin, three pounds of those and then you make like a white sauce with the milk and the chicken broth and you add a little bit of the shredded cheese to that and then you basically layer in your casserole dish you know potatoes sauce ground beef potatoes sauce ground beef three layers of that sprinkle a little bit of extra cheese on the top cover it with foil and bake it in the oven it comes out so good and it makes a whole 9 by 13 dish so honestly you could feed more than four people with this. And then for the cucumber salad, this is super easy. Basically, I just peeled slices of the peel off the edge of the cucumber. I sliced it using one of the thicker blades on the mandolin. And then I used a little bit of onion that I had here at home, but that's optional. And then the only ingredients in the dressing are white vinegar, or I used white wine vinegar, sugar and salt, and I added a little bit of pepper. And it's really, really simple, but honestly, it's a, like a really refreshing salad for summer obviously super budget friendly because it's just made with cucumbers and things <laughs> that you already have on hand so yeah this is our fourth dinner that I'm sharing with you guys in this extreme budget meal and definitely try this one I definitely think that your family will love the potatoes and the cucumber salad is awesome as well okay so after we made the potato casserole I had exactly four potatoes left so I baked those in the oven I just like to I wash and scrub my potatoes obviously and then I rub them with olive oil and salt and I put them on a baking sheet usually I line it with foil and then I just bake them at 425 degrees for it usually takes about an hour depends on how you know big the potatoes are if they're smaller ones sometimes they're done quicker but normally it's about an hour and then just let them cool a little bit and then I warmed up some of the leftover chili putting that on and then I have a little bit of the leftover cheese from the rest of the dishes and then we've also got some sour cream so we'll add some of that if you have some green onions on hand go ahead and throw that on otherwise you don't really need it and there is our last meal baked potato chili with cheese and salad I know some people probably don't think that this is a, a meal, but I would eat this for a meal any day of the week. So yeah, chili with baked potatoes and then the salad. I'm gonna put some just like Olive Garden salad dressing on this. And that is our last extreme budget meal, yum. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun to show you guys what I have left over after making those five meals with items for less than $40. So we've got some corn tortillas left, probably about I don't know, maybe six or eight of those. One egg, just a little bit of garlic left, some cilantro left, and some sour cream. I don't know that you could make much with this. I mean, 
You could fry these up into tortilla chips. You can make a little egg taco situation maybe, but overall I think obviously a pretty resourceful job of using up almost all of the ingredients. All right, thank you guys so much for coming along with me on today's video. I hope that you found it helpful and I hope that you will try out these recipes. Don't forget to check out the description box below for meatfabric.com slash Jen. There's also a link down there to the handy dandy printable that goes along with this video with the shopping list and all the recipes. So make sure that you don't forget that as well. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.